Well, hello YouTubers, computer nerds, electronics geeks, uh, all manner of folks. Welcome back to my channel. So, this is going to be a new series of retro computing videos, a new series of this old computer videos, on a different this old computer. I have been having such good luck with the uh, Teletech System Master that I started this uh, retro computing journey with that I've decided to pick up some other retro computers and see if I can uh, resurrect them, get them working again. And in this box, we have the next victim. So, let's open it up and see what we've got. Yes. It's a, uh, well, it's a Heathkit ET3400 microprocessor trainer, but it has issues. It has no back. And the power transformer is kind of hanging out. So, I got this on eBay pretty darn cheap because of these problems. No back, power transformer hanging out. So, I think what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to fabricate myself a back for this. Just just a base to, that I can mount this on and put the transformer in. And uh, we'll be up and running. So I got this pretty cheap. But, you know, complete operational ET3400s are going for a lot of money. So um, I think I got a bargain. I'm pretty sure I can fix it. You know, even if every chip on this board is bad, I could just replace them. That's not a problem. The only thing I'm really worried about is whether the switches all work. Um, hopefully they're all in good shape and work. Nothing else on this board really is difficult to replace. Um, a couple of the chips are going to be difficult to source if they have to be replaced, but I can replace them. Um, there's even uh, workarounds to use modern chips on these if necessary. But uh, what I will probably do is I'll start off baby steps slowly. Um, make sure it works. Uh, probably disconnect the power from the board. Put some juice to the transformer and see if I'm getting all the voltages we need. Um, I believe it puts out, uh, well, 5 volts, obviously, plus 5 volts, but I think we also get uh, minus 5 volts and minus 12 volts, although I don't think anything on the board actually uses it. I think it's just available, made available for accessories that are not present on this board. So, might just be able to power it up with just 5 volts and test it don't know. I need to study the manual a little closer. I downloaded a manual for it when I decided I was going to buy it. So I've got the manual. And um, you know I might, might need recapping. I don't know. The capacitors might be just fine. Like I said, I'll, I'll take baby steps on powering it up and see. And then what I will probably do is build a wooden base for it that I can mount this on about so tall and tuck the transformer in underneath it, bolt it down, get some power to it. Um, I might even totally repower it with something a little more modern like a wall wart or a laptop power supply. I don't know. We'll see. I'll give it some thought. This is going to be fun. This is going to be fun to play with because uh, you know, um, I bought some 68,000 chips recently on my visit to Apache Reclamation and Surplus. And um, I was thinking about building a 68,000 base computer. And then one practically fell into my lap. So, you know, if this chip's bad, I've got replacements now. Um, so, uh, and I've been thinking about building like a, um, a clone of the uh, Altair 6800 too. So, if I do put one of those together, I can develop code on this for it. Just like I'm using the, uh, my um, breadboard Z80 computer for developing code for the System Master. 
So I can develop code for the Clone 6800 if I ever build it using this. So that's, that's a beautiful thing. I'm really looking forward to this. This brings back good memories. I graduated from high school in St. Joseph, Michigan. Um, and St. Joseph, Michigan is right across the river from Benton Harbor, Michigan. And any Heathkit fan knows that the Heathkit factory was in Benton Harbor, Michigan. And we had a Heathkit retail store in St. Joseph. Yes, there were Heathkit retail stores. You could go in there and you could buy their stuff. I practically lived in that place as a kid, as a high school kid. Um, and Heathkit, being a local company, donated all kinds of stuff to our high school. We had trainers like this in our electronics class in high school. Uh, I think we also had a Kim one, but we had one of these as well. And then um, later in my senior year, I took the computer course, and we had a room full of H89 computers that were donated by Heathkit. Oh, love those H89s. Z80 based systems running CPM with uh, five and a quarter inch floppies. Oh, they were hot stuff back in the day, let me tell you. But uh, boy, this brings back memories, and I'm really looking forward to getting it up and running again. Got my work cut out for me. I've got to um, test the power supply, make sure it's putting out the right voltages, uh, make sure the caps are good, uh, then power the thing up. I might pull all the chips out, power it up, test the voltages at the sockets, then put the chips back in, power it up, and see if it's actually going to boot up. If it boots up, it should say CPU up up here. So that will be a good test of whether it's working or not when I turn it on. So anyway, there will be future videos in this series, probably quite a few as we go along. Um, restoring this thing, getting it in working order, and starting to develop software on it. So, this could go on for quite a while. I'm going to have to probably clean the circuit board, too. It's got something on it. Now that I'm looking at it out in the, in the sunlight, it's got some crud on it. Yeah. Decades of accumulated crud. So, anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you found this video interesting. Um, give it a thumbs up. Give it a like. And... Uh, Subscribe to see the future videos on this. They will be coming out and other retro computing videos and other videos on other things. Press the little bell icon that YouTube makes you press to be notified when new videos come out. And thanks again for watching. Have a good one. Bye.